Hi, I'm Richard McCarty. I'm professor of psychology at Vanderbilt University, and I'm here today with the Brentwood Alumni Chapter of Kappa Alpha Psi Fraternity Incorporated. And I'm here today to read a very special book. It's called Preaching to the Chickens, the story of young John Lewis. John Lewis is one of the great heroes in the history of our country, and he has a special connection to Nashville. So let me get to the first page. Little John Lewis loved the spring. He loved it not only because it was the time when the whole planet came alive, but also because it was the season of the chicks. Winter was too cold to bring them safely into the world. And summer, too hot. Spring was just right. Everyone on the farm had work to do. Work and put your trust in God, John's mama liked to say, and God's going to take care of his children. Trusting in God was easy. Work was a harder bargain. There was just so much work to do on a huge farm in southern Alabama. Every March, John's father hitched the plow to his stubborn old mule. Giddy up, he'd shout, and together they'd break new ground, carving lines in the earth. In the fall, after months of planting, weeding, and tending, the cotton would be ready for picking. And there's a picture of that old mule right there with John's dad. John's mother cooked the family meals from vegetables she grew. Collards, tomatoes, sweet potatoes, and other goodies. She cleaned the family's clothes in a big iron pot stirring them in the boiling water and washing them with homemade soap before hanging them on the line to dry. Yes, Lord, plenty of work on a farm. John was excited to be put in charge of the chickens. There were about 60 of them, Rhode Island Reds, strong winged Bantams, Dominiques with gray stripes as dull as dishwater and legs as yellow as daisies. John loved to see them flutter and strut their wings. Every day, John got up early and fed them dried corn just shelled from the cob, then lined their nest with fresh straw. Cluck, 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 the chicken said. John knew they meant thank you. In a soft voice, John would say to them, Enjoy this day that God has given us. The chickens, looking straight at him, seemed to understand. As much as John loved spring, he loved church even more. On Sundays, the whole family headed to services. John and his brothers were dressed in slacks and crisp white shirts, his sisters in neat dresses. Outside the church, friends and relatives greeted each other with big smiles. Inside, voices joined in song. John often listened to gospel and country music on the radio. He enjoyed it, but he found his favorite music of all in the church. Plain voices, praising God without any instruments at all. As the worshipers clapped and sang, John felt the Holy Spirit rocking the room. It reminded him of the peace he felt when he roused the chickens from slumber and led them into the light 
of a brand new day. Like the ministers he heard in church, John wanted to preach. So he gathered his chickens in the yard. John stretched his arms above his flock and let the words pour forth. The chickens nodded and dipped their beaks as if they agreed. They swayed to the rhythm of his voice. John's brothers and sisters couldn't tell one bird from another. But John knew every one, and he had a line of verse for each of them. Blessed are the peacemakers, he'd say, when they fought over their morning meal of corn. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, he would tell a hen who didn't want to share, for they shall be satisfied. One day, the rolling store man stopped by to make a trade. His truck was packed with flour, sugar, cooking oil, and bolts of cloth in bright colors. I've got plenty of good things, he said to John's mom and dad. I'll give them to you for a healthy hen. But John did not want to part with any of his chickens. And you can see him right there holding one of them. He convinced his parents there were other things to trade, like eggs and seeds. The chickens stayed on the farm, and John learned to speak up for those who couldn't speak for themselves. When the hen called Big Bell fell into the well and got stuck, John was determined to save her. He filled a basket with breadcrumbs, and when he lowered it down, she climbed in and was pulled to safety. God makes miracles every day, John preached. When you're down, he lifts you up. Sister Big Bell, I believe you know what I mean. Cluck, 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 Big Bell replied. John knew she meant, amen. John even baptized the chicks, bathing them in water from an old syrup can. But little Pullet had stayed under too long and appeared to have drowned. John prayed over her and laid her in the sun. After a while, she began to breathe again and soon was up on her feet. He can heal the sick, John declared, and raise the dead. Little Pullet, can I get a witness? Peep, 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 said Little Pullet. John knew she meant amen. John loved to tell the hens and chicks the good news. While he fed and watered them, he spoke about the value of hard work and patience. With faith and hope, he said, a bountiful harvest was sure to come. John's henhouse sermons, and you can see him here with his hands above the chickens, became so regular that his brothers and sisters took to calling him preacher. He didn't mind. He hoped that his words would stir people's souls and move them to action. For now, though, he had his own church right here among the pine trees and rolling hills of southern Alabama. Morning would find him in his usual place, preaching to the chickens. And that's the end of this wonderful book. Thank you very much.